One of the most important aspects of color grading is knowing the right order of operations. When you're color grading, it's not just about applying adjustments randomly, trying to get to your end goal. There is a sequence that you want to use to build a clean professional grade. And here's a very distilled order of these things. It's primaries, secondaries, and then look development. I'm going to use this node graph to actually illustrate this order of operations. So I'm going to label this node primaries, and then I'm going to use parallel nodes to just create these sort of groups so that you have a visual representation of this order of operations. So we have here your corrective exposure contrast, your saturation, and your white balance. And remember that the nature of your primaries adjustments are corrective, they're not creative. They do set a good foundation for your creative adjustments, but they're not meant to necessarily start creating some sort of flair or style. And then after that, you have your secondaries. And secondaries include things like your HSL adjustments. These are adjustments to individual hues and their saturation or luminance levels. You also have your power windows. That's where you use things like circular power windows or custom power windows to create things like vignettes, and you use these to relight the scene if and or when the scene needs it. Along with HSL adjustments and power windows, you might also have your skin tones adjustments. These individual adjustments can be as simple or as complex, right? It's very possible to have just one node for your skin tones or just one power window that you're applying to your scene or just one HSL adjustment where you're affecting your individual hues. Some colorists sometimes have multiple nodes for that certain section. So instead of having like only one power window, they might have a series of power windows and so they'll have multiple nodes for that. And that's okay, that's just part of each artist's individual workflow. After your secondaries, you'll have your look development. It can be as simple as one node. That just depends on the artist and the project that's being worked on. Typically, as part of look development, you'll have a node where you're affecting the tones of the image. This could include a single color cast where you're taking the entire image into a specific color. This can also be where you do things like split toning, where you use the curves to add a specific color to the highlights and the shadows. Another part of look development that's very common is your look contrast, right? So whereas the contrast in your primaries is corrective, this is the contrast where you have the creative freedom to create the mood that you want through contrast. Again, the look development section of your color grade can be very simple, it can be very complex, that just depends on what you want to do. After your look development, or you know, even as part of your look development, you may also have your effects. You may do things like glow, or halation, or film grain. Typically, these things are added towards the end of the node tree. There are some creative ways to implement these effects earlier on or even before the node tree, but that's a more sort of intermediate advanced thing and I don't want to confuse you guys. And then a lot of the time you may see what's called a CST node. And what this node is used for is for converting the color space of your footage into the correct color space for broadcasting, whether it's on YouTube or whatever the need is for the project. And in this node, what people do is use a color space transformer. And this is what allows you to convert your footage from the camera color space into whatever your broadcast requirements are. The reason why you find this CST towards the end of the node tree is because when you're color grading, you always want to try and be working within the larger color space. And so the signal in the node graph flows from left to right, right? So the signal is coming in through here and then it's being fed through all this and then it's being fed through this CST node here. So everything before the CST node is working in RE log C4 and RE wide gamut 4, which is a much larger color space than Rec 709. And so everything after the CST node is going to be in that Rec 709 color space. And you can't really do too much within that color space. It's much smaller and you are a lot more limited as to the things that you can do. You may also find nodes before your primaries. And I'll just set that up real quick. Don't worry at all about what I'm doing here. So a few nodes that you may find before your primaries and your secondaries and the entire node tree is a noise reduction node. It's common practice to first do the noise reduction on your image. And this can vary. Some people believe it's better to do it at the end. It really just depends on the footage that you're working with. Another node that you might find, and you will definitely see in my tutorials, is you will find a node called IDT. And what this is for is basically converting the color space from your camera into 
another color space, typically called a working color space or an intermediate color space. In the context of DaVinci Resolve, a very common color space that I use a lot and actually I would recommend that you get used to using, though it's not necessary, is DaVinci Wide Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate. And the reason for this is it's a very large color space and it gives you a lot of flexibility and a lot of benefits, especially when using tools like the HDR wheels, because uh, tools like these and others are color space aware. And so they're gonna work along with uh, this large color space to aid you in making much better adjustments. When you see IDT node, which stands for Input Device Transform, this node is transforming your footage from source to DaVinci Wide Gamut. And then if you see this node here in the beginning, you'll typically see this node, which can also be labeled ODT, Output Device Transform. You'll see this node transforming from the working color space into the display color space that's needed. And then depending on the creative needs of the project or something specific that a colorist may be doing, you may find some other nodes before the primaries, sections, and all that stuff. The purpose of showing you this order of operations is so that you sort of get used to following this order, especially as a beginner, it's good to have some sort of structure, some sort of container, which allows you to then practice, right? And to be a little bit more organized. And these are sort of the rules that once you become familiar with DaVinci Resolve and with color grading and all the different awesome tools that you get, these are the rules that you can then be creative about and then start to break on your own to discover some cool, unique things. Now, I just want to give you a few tips and sort of beginner mistakes. So number one is a tip that you want to try and keep a mindset of global to precise when you're creating your adjustments. And this is what I mean by that. This image is exposed really well, but let's just pretend it's not exposed well. And let's say we needed to fix that, right? Many people, especially beginners, they think, well, wow, I have access to all these amazing tools. Like, why don't I just go ahead and use all of them? Well, no, you don't necessarily need to. And for your primaries exposure, I would recommend using a global adjustment like the offset wheel or the global wheel inside of the HDR palette. Don't let the word HDR scare you. This tool can also be used for SDR content. Um, that's just the name. Yes, you can use it with HDR content, but it's also just perfectly fine with normal SDR content. So in the context of exposure, instead of coming in here and immediately starting to break up the image by uh, targeting individual parts of the image, such as the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights, and trying to affect them individually, see if you can make your corrective adjustment with just one tool that works on a global level. And then as you go down, you, you kind of want to keep that global to precise mentality at the global level of your color grade and then on each individual node. So for example, let's say I have my uh, image all done and let's say I had done my secondaries and everything's good to go. Now let's say I'm creating my look, right? So instead of coming in here and like, let's say using the log wheels, which targets um, more specifically certain parts of the image, instead of immediately going into targeting specific details when creating a look, I want to start with a broad adjustment. So let's say I wanted to create a warm look. The first thing I would do is warm up my image. And then from there, let's say I wanted to do more precise things, like maybe add a slightly cool tone to the shadows, then I could come in and do that. So just remember to go from general to more precise and you'll be treating your signal well and you'll be keeping things healthy and you'll be able to do a lot more things and you'll end up building a solid color grade because the way you build a good solid color grade is stacking subtle good quality adjustments on top of each other another common mistake that beginners do is skipping primaries and jumping straight into look development it's very important to make sure that your image is balanced and correct it first, and then start affecting your secondaries and your look development. The reason why is because you, it can be very easy to get lost, especially when you start color grading projects for other people. You'll have this video and it'll have different scenes. It can be very confusing if you start just sort of going all over the place. This happens a lot with beginners because they sort of have not learned this proper order of operations and they haven't practiced it enough to just remember to follow this structure. Another common mistake with beginners is overloading one node. And specifically with look development. For example, people will come in here and let's just say, you know, let's say we wanted to create a cool look or something like that. And then in that same node, they'll then go over to another tool and then they'll start, you know, let's say maybe they wanted to add some density. And then let's say maybe they wanted to shift the greens. And then also what they want to do is like affect the color warper. Instead of having one node 
for those individual things and sort of being strategic about how you're placing those nodes. They have them all in one node and that's not really safe for the signal. You wanna try and break that up and have individual nodes for that if the look that you're creating is that complex. Sometimes another version of this is people have secondary adjustments inside of like their primaries node because sometimes you can have your exposure, your contrast, your saturation, your white balance in one node. Like some people will just have a primaries node or they'll label it like balance or something like that. And they'll just, you know, keep everything in here and that's okay. But then they might go too far and then they'll start adjusting HSL adjustments in here or their skin tones in here. And the reason this isn't that beneficial is because you might want to have access to your skin tones on an individual node because then you can sample before and after that. And also it's better for your signal overall. Another common mistake is applying effects too early. You can think of effects as a, like a very specific adjustment that you're applying to your image. And so going back to um, what I was telling you about going from global to precise, kind of want to keep that towards the end. Also because they can be very processor intensive and depending on your system, they might slow down your workflow. And also typically these effects are meant to create like a sort of creative aesthetic to your image. So you wanna keep it as part of your lip development. And so it's good to just keep it towards the end. Again, for you as a beginner, once you become familiar with everything, you'll just know when and how to break the rules. And this is a good structure to follow. You could actually copy this node tree structure and then save it as a power grade. If you wanna do that, you can just create your node tree and then right click, select grab still. And then just call this something like basic node tree. And then you can use this to start exploring the different tools inside of DaVinci Resolve and to start teaching yourself and learning how to color grade. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to help you out. Thank you for watching.